Next up we have Group C, which has the likes of France, Australia, Peru and Denmark. France do have quite the pool of talent, don't they? I could sit here and go through all the recognised and established names in Europe, but I think we'd be here for a while, so I'll just go ahead and show you this picture. I'll tell you now, I could probably recognise every single one of those players and the teams which they play for, with more included being missed out in that particular game of course. The European runners-up didn't quite pass their qualifying round with flying colours. As the defence looked a bit shaky at times, they also lost to Sweden on the final game with Loris making a costly error to lose them the game. Given France's plethora of talent in their squad, I expect them to make a strong World Cup run this year, and so I am going to predict them to finish first in this group fairly comfortably, although they will be presented with a few challenges of course. The Socceroos Australia will be looking to make this a memorable World Cup. Their best ever finish to a World Cup was in 2006 in Germany, where they finished in the last 16 knockout stages. They also have a few players from the most recognised leagues in Europe. Matthew Ryan of Brighton has had an impressive season at Brighton, playing all 38 games in the league and keeping 10 clean sheets for the Seagulls. Mila Jedinak has taken Aston Villa to a playoff final for a place in the Premier League. He's made 75 caps and scored 18 goals and is currently the captain for the Aussies. Aaron Moy has also had a good season at Huddersfield in the Premier League, guiding them to safety. Matthew Leckie has had a decent season with Hertha Berlin in the Bundesliga. He's made 51 caps and scored 6 goals for the Aussies as well. Tim Cahill will once again be their most influential player. He has made over 100 caps and he scored 50 goals in international level. At 38 years old, he'll definitely be looking to score at a fourth World Cup in his time and he'll probably be their key player in this campaign once again. Overall, the Aussies have a decent chance of qualifying in this group for the last 16 once again, although despite their best efforts, I am going to predict them to come in fourth, as I think they are slightly unpredictable but will offer high entertainment value for sure. Peru finished just above Chile in the South American qualifiers. They went through fifth just by goal difference with plus one compared to Chile's minus one. They'll look to put on a strong campaign, wanting to match their South American rivals Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay and Colombia. In terms of recognisable players, at least from my perspective, Andre Carrillo has played 28 games for Watford this season, although only finding the net once and two assists to his name. The former Schalke player Jefferson Farfan will look to be Peru's key player this campaign. Even at 33, he scored key goals that ensured Peru's qualification. He's also scored 10 goals and assisted 6 times in his recent season, playing 22 games for Loco Moscow. In the qualifiers, they were pretty solid going forward though, scoring 27 times. Only, I think, 3, maybe 4 teams uh, scored more times than they did in that group. So I will predict them to finish third ahead of Australia, simply because I think they will put in some strong performances and they'll be highly motivated to try and match their South American rivals. So I think I will give them the edge for third, but not to go any further than the group stage this World Cup. Denmark have only been getting better in recent years. They now have a plethora of recognised players in the top leagues, such as Kasper Schmeichel and Jonas Lossel in goal. In the defence, Andreas Christensen of Chelsea, Janka of Huddersfield. In midfield, they have the likes of Pierre-Emerick Hoiberg, William Kvist, Thomas Delaney, and of course, Christian Eriksen, who has scored 11 goals in qualifying for the Dens. For centre forwards, they also have Kasper Dolberg, Yusuf Paulsen, Martin Braithwaite, Andres Cornelius, and of course, the one and only Lord Bentner, who, to be fair, scored 30 goals, the most for Denmark in uh, international level. So they have a fairly rich squad for this year's campaign. They qualified in flying colours, thumping Northern Ireland 5 1 away in the playoff. This has been a decent draw for them, as France and Australia can be fairly unpredictable sometimes. I think they will be pretty competitive, and I am predicting them to finish second in this group stage. This means my predicted order of Group C is as you've guessed. France to qualify first, Denmark to qualify second, Peru to finish third, and Australia to finish fourth. On to Group D, which consists of Argentina, Iceland, Croatia, and Nigeria. First up, Argentina, runners-up of the last World Cup, of course, and among the bookies' favourites to win the competition this year. Some of you may be aware that they had a very tense qualifiers, finishing third in the end, but they could have very well ended up not qualifying at all for this year's World Cup. With a few rows going on in their team, including Messi being banned for a couple games, they had a rough qualifying round, and it remains to be seen whether they can incorporate their star-studded squad into a, um fully working machine, well balanced, you know, offensive and defensive. Their team is about as star-studded as you can get. Messi, Aguero, Higuain, Dybala, Icardi, Di Maria, 
the list goes on. Elsewhere they have some very established options in midfield and defence, including Eva Benega, Lucas Biglia, Giulio Celso, Manuel Lanzini, Sergio Romero, Federico Fazio, Marcus Rojo, etc. Their squad has only gotten better in my opinion, and if they can choose their best team with the best chemistry, I think they could potentially go all the way as well. It will be a close group, but I am going Argentina to finish first in the group, despite fierce competition from the likes of Croatia, Iceland and Nigeria. Croatia looked to be an impressive team in the European Championships two years ago, pushing champions Portugal all the way in their last 16 match, and also beating Spain to win their group as well. With players such as Luka Modric, Mario Mandzukic, Marcelo Brozovic, Daniel Subasic, and Ivan Perisic who has had another good season at Inter Milan. They will be very competitive once again in this World Cup, but I will predict them to finish second in this group. And despite their clear quality, I'm not sure if it's on that same level as the bookies' favourites this year. Iceland had a very good qualification for this year's World Cup. They finished first and kept four clean sheets out of five, including one against Croatia. The whole team looks to be intact since the last European Championships, with the likes of Ragnar Sigurdsson, Gylfi Sigurdsson, and Hal Dawson all keeping their places. Despite a bit of a rocky group stage in the last championships, it looks pretty solid against England, although that's not really saying much, is it? <laughs> but um, I expect them to be very competitive in this group as well. Like Croatia, I think they will fight really hard, but I'm going to predict them to finish third in this group, although I think they will have a decent group stage. Nigeria finished a comfortable first in their qualifying group, amongst the likes of Algeria and Cameroon. They also have a few key players of note here, John Obi Mikel, of course, the Wall of Africa, as he's called. Wilfred Ndidi, who has been getting regular game time at Leicester this season, and has been pretty uh, pretty good for them. Uh, Victor Moses of Chelsea, right wing back. Um, he's got into the FA Cup final, they finished fifth. So not the best seasons of Chelsea, but Victor Moses would definitely be one of their key players. Alex Iwobi of Arsenal. <laughs> uh, Arsenal have had a decent season, and um, Iwobi um, also could be a decent option for them. Um, Ahmed Musa of CSK Moscow looks to be a decent player, as well as Kalechi Ilanacho for Leicester as well. So they have a few decent players to look out for here and there, but will they get shaken up easily at this year's World Cup, and in particular with such a fierce group? I am going to predict Nigeria to finish 4th in this year's World Cup group, with its competitiveness and um, the quality difference between the clubs. I do think Nigeria will unfortunately cut the short straw in this year's group stage. Despite me making the group sound like it's closer than it is, I think it will be one of the more competitive groups in the World Cup this year. All the teams around them have, have similar quality, I believe. But I think the teams will finish in a group stage in this particular order. Argentina to finish first, Croatia to finish second, Iceland to finish first, and Nigeria to finish fourth. 